We got chapstick. Look at that. Look at that. Ready for it? All right. Hello, 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 hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, hold on, hold on. Hello there. How are you? I'm doing fabulous, thank you. So, today, today is uh, uh, March 21st, which means yesterday was the first day of spring. And, if you watched on my last video, how I mentioned how I love shorts, it is short season. It is shorts season right now. You know, and spring has sprung. It makes me, it makes me wanna hold on. Yeah, it makes me want to jump for joy. In the spirit of spring, you see how the sun is like, they're just blessing me with its glow? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so, headed to the gym. As you can probably tell. And I feel amazing today. Like, I got like seven hours of sleep. But before we go into all those details, uh, let me tell you guys what I've changed since the last time you saw me. I realized, uh, um, pertaining to, you know, how I'm working out and stuff like that, I realized that I, with the proliferin table, since the proliferin table, table is um, primarily designed to build strength, Right, I came to the conclusion that I was dieting or I entered this uh, weight loss phase as a power lifter. Now, let me break that down for you if you don't know, just to you know further elaborate on what I'm saying. So, instead of trying to diet to lose a lot of body fat or excess body fat, basically bring my body fat percentage down, which is what I want, right? I entered this with the hopes of one, with the hopes of two things. The first one being get my body fat percentage down. And the other thing is to, was to maintain all of my strength that I've gained in my surplus phase, right? Uh, which is not how I would like to diet, you know? So just break down even more. Power lifters typically only diet down to, to be at a certain weight, right? Because in each, um, in every, every meet, there are different weight lifting classes. Um, and the scale is in is in kilograms, so you'd be part of the, for example, the 83 kilogram class, you know, and uh, 100 kilogram class, and so on and so on. So everything is based off of classes. So what a powerlifter tries to do is die down to be in that class while trying to maintain all of their strength. So they're still hitting the table or still hitting a powerlifting program that allows them to maintain majority of their strength, maintain all of their strength while they're dieting to be in that weight class. I hope that's making sense, right? But what bodybuilders typically do, opposed to powerlifters, um, we concentrate or yeah, they concentrate mainly on uh, how they look, right? So strength isn't a priority when it comes to when it comes to their goals of dieting down. So 
in my goal, and I, you know, uh, spoke to myself because I do talk to myself. I'm not crazy. Don't worry. Um, I, I realized that I really, although I love pushing heavy stuff, lifting heavy stuff, I love putting heavy stuff on my back. I love, love, love lifting heavy. You know, that isn't why I'm dieting at the moment. You know, I'm not dieting to keep my strength. I I think I would rather enjoy the process of getting stronger every day, every week, in hopes to hit a new PR, personal record for those who don't know. Uh, so, with that being said, I've decided to limit what type of compound movements I will be doing in the gym. Uh, previously, I would be doing about, uh, sorry, I would be spending about like an hour, hour and a half in the gym, focused around all of my uh, compound lifts. Um, and with the elimination of this compound lift, I would be more focused on keeping my muscular development the the muscle the, the muscles that I've developed over the surplus I would rather keep that I'd rather keep the mass you know keep the keep how my body the muscle and the how my muscles look rather than the strength that is associated with it because I think that I can build my strength a lot more a lot quicker than putting extra five pounds on my skin um, I hope that makes sense I removed um, benching the traditional benching flat benching and deadlifting from my split uh, and I changed from doing squats two days a week to now one day a week which is only on Wednesday and I'll probably be uh, more of a I'll be squatting with more of a hypo, uh, hypertrophy focus so doing high rep repetitions uh, with low to moderate weight just to get a pump you know uh, at this current moment I am I'm more obsessed with how I look than what I can how much I can lift or push or or squat if that makes sense I hope that's making sense hope you understand what I'm saying let's go into the workout here we go Hey guys, welcome to the commentary portion of the video where I'm going to explain to you guys my workout and try to pass along any tips and tricks, my knowledge to you for that so that you guys can better assess yourself on your fitness journey. So this morning we are starting off this uh, chest workout with three sets of 15 on the machine pec fly using both of our arms to get blood into the chest as efficiently as possible. So for the working sets with the same machine, I decided to do five sets of 12. Now what's different to the warm up to the working set, as you can see, is that I am using one arm at a time. What I found out that doing it one arm, one arm at a time allows me to exceed the normal range of motion. Imagine, as you saw, uh, doing two arms, I stopped in the middle because I can't phase through my other arm, right? So providing, so doing it one arm provides me a little bit more range of motion attacking the, the upper chest. If that was a lagging point in some of, you, uh, some of you guys' physique, try this exercise. This exercise does wonders for that upper pectoral. The next exercise of the day is flat dumbbell pressing. Now you may be asking yourself, didn't he say that he was going to remove barbell pressing from his new workout regimen? You'd be correct, but still, the one of the best exercises for chest is a pressing movement. For example, 
barbell pressing. Now, because I didn't want to uh, spend a lot of time on that specific compound movement, I did do a variation of it called the dumbbell press. So, moving on, I did four sets of eight, as well as an AMRAP set as my fifth set. AMRAP stands for as many reps as possible. Now, while, while I was performing this exercise, I did steadily increase my weight. I started off with 50 pounds, then I went to 65 pounds, then I went to 75 pounds, finishing it off with 80 pounds as my AMRAP set. I got 10 repetitions, and you'll see that I do struggle on that 10th rep, which is what I want. It allowed me to test my strength because the most that I have uh, flat dumbbell pressed was about 95 pounds for about three or four repetitions. Last chest exercise of the day is uh, the decline hammer chest press machine. I did four sets of ten, again with the same mindset of warming up, getting my mind my mind muscle connection with the specific part of the pectoral that I was trying to hit. So as you can see, I'm doing one plate on each side for I believe this is about fifteen reps. Um, getting the flow of it you know um, the next three sets were sorry the next set was two plates for 10 repetitions followed by two plates and a dime uh, for two sets again doing 10 sets sorry 10 repetitions for each set Let's take a look at how my shoulders and my elbows are positioned while performing this movement. Um, you'll see that my when I set up, I like to have the same stance, quote unquote stance, as I would if I were bench pressing. It allows me to feel more secure when performing the exercise and it allows me to really drive with my chest rather than using my shoulders and other body parts to support the movement therefore giving uh, not having enough stress on the chest itself so right now to finish off this day I'm hitting triceps uh, I'm doing six sets of tricep extensions using the bar I on this particular day, I used both grips, meaning supinated and pronated. If you don't know what those mean, uh, basically it means my palm, either my palms were up, facing up, or were, or they were facing down. Uh, I didn't put any rep ranges in the title because what I did was a little bit um, specific to my needs. I, while performing the exercise in either grip. Uh, I would hit a number, and then I, for the other portion, the other uh, position of the grip, I would try to hit half or more than the previous positioned number. So, for example, if I was doing supinated and I did 16 repetitions, when I went to pronated, I would try to do 8 or more repetitions. This allowed me to um, effectively hit my triceps as hard as I could while giving it all that I could. If there was still more in the tank while doing supinated and I went to pronated, I still had a lot of energy. I would do as much as I could until my tricep was fatigued. So that was the workout. I finished off uh, after uh, all the muscle building, stuff like that. I did... A little bit of cardio, uh, as you can see on the screen, I did uh, 20 minutes at 15% incline, 
three miles an hour, uh, walking a little over, walking exactly a mile long actually, and burning over 350 calories. So that's the workout guys. Let me know if you enjoyed it with the like, uh, comment down below, subscribe, tell your friends. This is Chris Not Boring. Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate you. I really, really, really appreciate, appreciate you watching what I've created. Thank you. See you in the next one.